Hey, what's up, guys? Nick Major here with Adobe Radio. I'm about to hop on a Skype call with Pierre, frontman of Simple Plan. I don't know if you're aware of this, but Simple Plan have a massive song on TikTok right now. They're classic, I'm Just a Kid, so I want to talk about that, as well as their new album that I know that they have been working on for some time now, plus life in quarantine. So stay tuned, stick around, and let's call it Pierre. Oh, Mr. Pierre, we are weeks and weeks and weeks into isolation. How are you? How's life? Life is okay. I I, um, I look at different people out there and their lives, and I look at I can imagine what it's like for a lot of people out there. And I think that all things considered, my situation is pretty nice. Uh, I live in a place where the weather is nice, where I'm outside most of the time. Uh, my wife and I and kids have just moved into a new house in a small town. There, I think there was a total of like five or six cases in this town. Um, so very, 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 very low risk. We have a nice, pretty big property. We've got some animals. We've got two dogs, a cat, and 14 chickens. Uh, so my kids are entertained. We have a pool in the backyard. Uh, so all things considered, I think that we're we're doing, you know, we're we feel very lucky and very blessed to be in the situation here. So we're, we're doing okay. It's, it's, I'm not going to lie. It's challenging in some parts. You know, we have two children that are six and eight years old and they require a lot of attention when they don't go to school like this. Um, and on top of that, my wife has started a podcast. Uh, so she's upped her workload, which means that the children's workload falls more on my shoulders. Uh, so, but it's, but it's all good. You know, we're all, like I said, all things considered, we are doing fantastic. That's good. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. And last time uh, I knew of a house that you lived in, I think it was your house that I stopped by a number of years ago back in 2016. I did an interview with you and Chuck out by the pool just before uh, taking one for the team came out. Yeah, that was, that, was, that was Chuck's house. Yeah. Oh, that was Chuck's house. Okay, okay. Cause, yeah. Uh, yeah, all right. But you're in a new spot. So you're in a nice, uh, in a nice new little, little area. Yeah, I, I, I lived in San Diego uh, in the suburbs of San Diego for 13 years. I met my wife back. I mean, we, we met like 16 years ago and she was living in San Diego and I sort of like started to spend some time there and kind of established our family there. Um, so I, I was living there for a long time and then our kids were getting older and uh, my wife, Lachelle is from this small town called Ojai, which mm -hmm. is near LA. And, uh, she, we, we decided last year, like, you just moved to Ojai. It's a small town. It's great. And plus, you know, her parents live up here and her family's up here and her roots are up here. Um, so we kind of found ourselves asking the question, like, why do we live in San Diego? And uh, it was kind of like, well, why don't we move back to family? So now we're, we're here and the timing couldn't have been better because, you know, with this whole pandemic thing, it's nice to be in a small town where you feel a little less exposed and, yeah. um, you know, safer from it. So. Yeah. Nice. And speaking of Lachelle and her new show, it is Rock Wife, and it is right on Adobe Radio. What you see it on is. my backdrop here. Yeah, it's so on Adobe. Yeah. Do you know any kind of details about it? I mean, I should be asking her about it, but uh, do, do you, do you kind of know what it's about? Yeah, I, I, I've been involved in it um, just by default. Uh, <laughs> it's it's called Rock Wife, and it's a it's kind of uh, it's really her point was like she's met a bunch of other girlfriends and wives of guys and bands through me you know, touring on a warp tour with me or uh, going on the road with me and the band. Um, and she loves to talk. She's a huge fan of, of Howard Stern, his kind of comedy. And one day, like about six months ago, she's like, I think I want to start a podcast. And I was like, what? Podcast? Why? And uh, she's like, no, I think because she needs something. You know, she's dedicated her life to her our children for the last eight, nine years of her life. And uh, she's come to that point where she's like, I need something. I need something that's mine. That's my, you know, my creative outlet. And uh, so she decided, she's like, I want to, I want to do this. I want to be like a, like a radio person. And she's like, I want to talk to other wives of band guys, but I don't want to talk about the band guys. She's like, I want to talk about our lives and how us wives are dealing with this and what it's like to be a rock wife. And, uh, you know, I think that her, her point, which I thought was really good, is that most girls that have ended up marrying guys in bands end up being pretty cool chicks, you know? So she's like, I want to talk to these girls and I want to have a good time. It's very, very, you know, not to be taken too seriously. It's a good one to take a have a cocktail and listen. Um, you know, a lot of uh, sort of jokes. It's just, it's just a good feel-good show and she's really enjoying it. She's actually editing right now. Usually I'd be in my studio, but now she's taking up my studio. 
<laughs> <laughs> so before this whole thing hit, you you got to be one of kind of the lucky bands because I've talked to a number of artists who they at least got to kind of wrap up a tour just before this started. A lot of bands, they were taking kind of the holidays off and then getting ready to hit the road in March. Yeah. But you were over in the UK with Bowling for Soup right before it all happened. How was that? Was that at least a good send off to the foreseeable future? It was a great tour to be on. We also did some dates in Australia back in December, which were super fun. Um, but to be honest, we were kind of like our our new album, which is done now. Um, we were planning on putting that out and going out with Newfound Glory, which is like now. Um, and yeah, that's uh, going to start that, next that week. Postponed. Yeah, next week. Um, so that got postponed. So we 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 were also we're kind of like we did a tour with Bowling for Soup back in the UK. That was fun. It was like six days. And uh, but we were definitely looking forward to this next tour. And it it's definitely put a new challenge, you know, into the schedule and try to figure out what the hell were we doing as, as band guys? You know, it's like there, this is like probably the one of the most affected uh, businesses, so to speak, um, would be concerts. You know, um, there's it's probably the worst place to be to catch a virus. It's like you're in a sweaty yeah. club rubbing up against people, you know, um, so. So, yeah, but it was definitely a it was a rude awakening. But, it's you know, we're trying to take it in stride and see what happens. Yeah. And I know at this point that you guys did announce that that tour got put off. And I'm guessing my guess is as good as yours as to when uh, that tour could happen again. But it sounds like you guys are are you holding off on the new album release just to wait until you're able to to tour on it or to kind of. uh... Uh, We've we've talked about what we're going to do. There was there was talks of like holding it off for a bit. And then there was talks of like we can't hold it off because. We don't know how long it's going to be. And right now we're just kind of figuring out like how we're going to release it. Like we're, uh, we're in the middle of getting another record deal right now. So it's kind of, it's not that we're holding it off. It's more that we're just trying to, okay, now we got to plan it and figure out, you know, do we release it all at once? Do we do a couple of EPs? Do we break it up? You know, it's cause now there's so many different ways to put out a record. You know, you could put out a song every week. You could put out 12 at once. You could. So it's, it's a matter of just figuring that out. Mm -hmm. And I know people will be eager. You guys, I always like it because you guys never rush albums out. You always give them uh, some time. It gives you a chance to tour the world and show everybody the new tunes before putting new ones out. But there's this app called TikTok. And oh my God, I cannot believe what happened with I'm Just a Kid. Because Thank you, TikTok. Thank you. How did you guys find out that this was happening? Because for those who don't know, TikTok, it is full of like the latest and greatest memes. And people started taking the chorus of I'm Just a Kid and they created the hottest thing with it. When you're spending every day on your own and here it goes, I'm just a kid. And a life is- yeah, it's funny. We, um, I had a couple of people that, that sent me some text message. There was Travis from We The Kings. There was Jared from Bowling for Soup, and they were like, hey, bro, do you guys know that uh, your song is, like, trending on TikTok? And at that point, I was like, oh, I can't do another freaking app, another, you know, another uh, social media app that I I, I don't feel like getting into. So I was like, oh, yeah, that's cool, whatever, that's cool, you know. And then later, like, Travis again was like, no, dude, it's really blowing up. We're like, yeah, that's cool, whatever. I'm not, you know, I'm not going to look at that. And then Jared from Bowling for Soup was like, guys, your song, I'm Just a Kid, is, like, blowing the fuck up and you guys need to like pay attention so we're like oh okay cool so we looked into it and like sure enough we're like holy crap this song has really taken off um and it's been cool you know i think i think what's what i really appreciate about it the most is obviously i'm just a kid was one of our big songs when we came out but you know it's a little bit dated it's not like it's going to blow up today you know but it it gives people the chance to like who's simple plan you know like you have these 12 year old 15 year olds that have no idea who we are and they're like, oh, look at this discography. Whoa, okay, cool, yeah, you know. And they might, because I'm seeing our numbers on Spotify, are, we're almost at six million monthly listeners right now, which is, you know, more than we ever had. And it's for sure a little bit due to due to the TikTok thing. So it's pretty cool. I was I was happy to see that that was happening. And like you said, because the demographic on a spot like TikTok, it's it is a a, a younger audience. I think the best thing that can come from this, you guys aren't out there to tour to release new music to potentially be seen by a new audience. This is one of the blessings that could have happened dur- during this time. So nice it, job. So that thankful, was awesome. So thankful. And, and it, like, it really was, z- uh, we didn't push it at all. Like it was purely organic. We didn't like, we didn't promote it. We didn't have a label trying to place it. It was like purely like people calling me dude, the song's blowing. I'm like, what's TikTok? You know, it's just, it's so it's cool. You know, it's cool to see the song that was written 
over 20 years ago. It was released in 2002, but that song was written, I want to say, like, probably about in 2000 um, and maybe even 1999. And uh, to, to think that now it's, it's kind of resurfacing like this, it's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And you, you can't make that stuff happen. Like you were saying, there was no label push. It's just when that stuff happens out of the blue to where even you guys don't yeah. know it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've seen you've done a couple live stream sets for people online to, uh, mm -hmm. to tune into and listen. I'm guessing that there'll be a couple more of those down the road, probably. One more day with you every time I see your face. Yeah, I've, I've done a few. Usually when I first started, I don't know if my Instagram app was an update or something. When I first started them, I would it would give me the choice, like, you want to delete it or you want to keep it there? And I'd be like, oh, I'll delete that one. I'll, I'll keep that one. I'll delete that one. I put it on the story. Um, so I've done, like, I want to say like maybe eight or seven or seven or eight. Uh, but this last one, because I just updated my app because I'm, I'm an old guy now that doesn't update his apps anymore. Um, and it was like, do you want to post it? I was like, oh, I'll post it. So that one stayed on. It's, it's on my Instagram. Um, but yeah, I've just, I, I enjoy getting out there and just connecting with people and giving them something to watch. I know people are really bored. And, uh, and it's also nice, I find, for me to, to remind myself like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm also a guy in a band. Because my life here is like, I'm a dad and I take care of chickens and dogs and I'm out there like, <laughs> you know, working on the property and stuff. And sometimes I forget like, oh shit, I'm a rock star too. I got to remind myself like to get in that mind frame. Yeah, that, that frame of mind. Because it's like, sometimes it's, it's just to not to veer off too far. But when I, when I'm at home for a long time and I have a show coming up or a tour coming up, if I haven't toured in like two, three months and uh, we haven't rehearsed because we don't live in the same town. We show up like, you know, Australia or something. It's like day one of a tour and I'm going on stage and I'm like, holy shit. Holy shit. How do I do this again? Am I I'm like, <laughs> I, I feel like I'm not a rock star. So it's good to keep in touch with fans and play songs for people and uh, just remind myself of who I am on stage. So you guys, you've been a band for like 20 some odd years now. And at this rate, it, will this fall into potentially the biggest gap that you guys have ever not toured if it looks like for the next year or so? Or have you guys taken some extensive uh, time off touring in the past? There, we've always t taken a, a little bit of time off between records. And as you stated before, we're slow between records. And it's not it's not by choice. Uh, I think it's because we have this we're 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 insane perfectionists and we're we always want to make sure that our records and I'm sure everybody feels that way. But like we want we want these records to be so good. And we sometimes come in, you know, with the attention of like, oh, we'll write these songs in a month, recording in another month, we'll be back on the road in five, you know, and uh, it just never turns out that way. We just feel like ah, it's got to be so good. You know, I, I want to feel that my record is as good as it could possibly be. And that just takes time. Um, mm -hmm. So we have taken some big breaks, notably, but after our second album, we took like a year and a half to make the third record. Uh, so that was a big break off touring. Um, but it's a different kind of break, you know, because on that break after the second album, we just come off of like multi platinum records. We were on top of TRL we were, you know, songs on on pop radio and just like, oh, yeah, you know, we're the, we're the shit right now. So we felt like, you know, I, I need a break. Now it's like this break is more kind of forced on upon us, you know, um, mm -hmm. so it is a little bit different. But but uh but yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a long one, you know. We've already last year we did this February. If we can be back on the road by next February, I would be really really happy. Uh, maybe it'll be before. Who knows? The thing is, and that's what's tough is that the hardest thing in this whole thing for me is that there's so many questions that you can't even speculate. You speculate, you know. You, you even things that people in the news have said two months ago are no longer true today. So is this gonna you know kind of somewhat solve itself in the next six months probably not but maybe maybe they'll find something a treatment or you know i think i think a vaccine is, is a long time from now but maybe there'll be a treatment that that makes this a little bit more like okay now we can treat like the flu um so so yeah so it's tough you know but it's definitely going to be one of the longer periods but i think because of what's happening we're going to be doing more of these we're going to be doing more interviews online we're going to be you know i'm doing uh, i'm doing these live things we're we're planning on doing some performances somehow. Um, I, I just saw All Time Lows doing a show on Veeps, I think, today, or just happened, I'm not sure. Um, so I think we're going to stay active in other ways. Um, so it won't be like a full break, so to speak. Um, but, but yeah, it's definitely going to be 
it's going to be a long time without being on the road. And that's, that's a little bit scary more for me personally <laughs> with my family. It's like my wife and I have always, you know, had a great relationship. And I think part of our relationship has always been like, it's been nice to be like, bye, I love you. I'll see you. And then you miss each other and then you come back. Now it's like, okay, yeah, you're still here, you know? So um, it's a different dynamic that we have to deal with. It's good. Yeah. And the, the scariest thing, like we kind of touched on, is that these concerts, these shows with thousands of people coming close to each other, it seems like that's going to be the last thing that the green light gets hit on because uh, we just we just don't know. But even though uh, it could be a while, it does we don't seem know. like... Yeah, exactly. We don't, we don't know. But with yeah. album number six, though, you perfectionist men, are you guys happy with what you created with this one at least? Is it, is it uh, meet the standards of Simple Plan? This is, to me, I think by far one of the albums that I'm the most proud of um, because I've always been very, very involved with every album. Obviously I'm one of the main songwriters of the band. Um, and since album two, which was 2004, still not getting any, I've been sort of producing our demos. So I, I, I write the songs with Chuck. Uh, we brought in some extra songwriters here and there, but I pretty much for 99% of our songs, I am the one, building the skeleton, building the prototype, building what it's going to sound like in my computer, recording everything. And then I take it to the band and then the band re-records everything. Um, so for this album, I've done it more than ever. A lot of my production is on the album. I'm actually a, a, a producer on this album. Um, and I feel like as a person, as a musician, as a producer, I've really come into my own at this point. You know, I've been doing this for long enough where I'm, I'm starting to feel like I've mastered my craft, not mastered, but you know, I'm, I'm doing well. Um, and I feel really, I feel like I'm the most part of this album. Like this is the most that I've given personally to an album. Um, and I think I'm very proud of it and I think it sounds great. I think the song, the songs are great. The songwriting is great. And I feel like there's like the fans, there's like, I would say four or five, maybe six songs that the fans are going to lose their shit over. Like, I think that they're going to be really, really happy. And that's, that's always a challenge because a band in the pop punk era you know, you want you. I love pop punk music. I've always have. When a pop punk song comes out, that's awesome. It's always my favorite genre. But you also want to like keep yourself fresh. I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to keep making the same record over and over again. So we always try to do different things, and you know, and that can sometimes backfire on us, or it could be, whoa, that was so cool. Um, and on this album, I feel like we've really hit the pop punk sort of like what they all want. And then we did some things that are a little bit out there, but they're out there in a cool way. They're not out there in like a, ooh, that's kind of pop. You know what I mean? It's not like we're pushing the envelope in a way that I think fans are going to be stoked about. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I just, I'm, I'm, I'm just fully 100% behind it. I think the, the songwriting is some of our best. Uh, lyrically, some really awesome, honest lyrics in there. Um, and the production, we've got uh, Zach Servini mixed most of it. Um, and he produced one song. Uh, then we have myself and another guy, Jay, that produced a bunch of songs. And it's, it's, it's sounding, is, in my opinion, one of our best records. That's awesome. And with this TikTok stuff going off, oh, not a bad time to release one of the, yeah. the best songs off the album. Yeah, it's not a bad <laughs> time to release. And I, and I think, like, I don't want to, we haven't talked about this, and I'm sure that Chuck will be listening to this and going like, dude, shut up. But, like, I think that we'll be putting out some stuff pretty soon. We're not going to be waiting that long. That's good. Um, and, uh, yeah, just, just kind of hopping on the TikTok momentum and also it's time, you know, it's been, it's been a long time and, uh, we don't want to sit on these songs. Uh, we want people to hear them and they feel fresh and they feel good. So we'll, we'll see what the rest of the year holds. I'm sure that you will do the best you can to stay productive, to stay, to stay, uh, busy. Cause again, we don't know how long this is going to last, but for now I'm excited to hear the new music. I, I can't tell you how happy I was to see this TikTok thing for the millionth time. Cause that was just such a, a fun thing, but also just thanks for chatting and, and uh, catching up with what, what life's been like in these recent months. Yeah. Thank you, man. It's great talking to you as well. And yeah, we're, we're, like I said, we're, I'm so thankful for what has happened with I'm Just Kid on TikTok. It's like one of those things where, like I said, it's completely out of our control and we're just like, sweet, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to we're gonna try to keep feeding the monster. You know, it's funny because we're, we're, we did some I'm Just a Kid videos on our thing. Um, and obviously people are like, you know, do it as a band. And we're like, we'd love to, but we're not together. <laughs> um, so we, we've managed to trick that and we're, we'll be posting some stuff pretty soon. Obviously, I'm sure you guess how we tricked it. Um, but, uh, 
but we're recreating some of the old simple plan pictures uh, on TikTok coming up soon. Well, dude, thanks again for chatting. Go get on with your day. I really appreciate it. Glad you are well. And uh, maybe maybe we'll see each other again someday when we're allowed to go to concerts and rock out. For sure. Well, you know, you got my number now, so give me a call whenever. That's right. Take it easy, man. Thanks again. Later, bud. Okay, everybody, that was my chat with Pierre from Simple Plan. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to give it a like, leave a comment, tag a friend who's a Simple Plan fan, and be sure to subscribe to Adobe Radio to be up to date with all the latest news, interviews, updates, and more from all your favorite artists. I am once again Nick Major. Follow me at Nick underscore Major on Twitter and Instagram and TikTok at Nick dot major where i've been posting some great stuff and in the meantime wash your hands keep your face covered when you are going out stay healthy out there see you next time <laughs>